Good morning. Um, I'm calling to order the zoning administrator meeting for May 2nd um, because it's 1030. My name is Christine Tumians. I'm serving as zoning administrator for today. The first item on the agenda is approval of minutes for April 18th, 2024, the draft minutes. Um, I have no changes. Um, so the minutes of April 18th are approved as submitted. The next item is public comment. So we're taking public comments on non-agenda matters. So this is a time when any person may address uh, matters not listed on the agenda, but which are within the subject matter jurisdiction of this committee. So if you would like to make a comment on something that's not scheduled for today, uh, please raise your hand. Okay. I'm not seeing anyone raising their hand, so we'll move on to statement of purpose. The zoning administrator is appointed by the planning and economic development director and has the responsibility and authority to conduct public meetings and hearings and to act on applications for minor or reduced review authority projects or entitlements. A determination or decision by the zoning administrator may be appealed to the Design Review Board, Cultural Heritage Board, Planning Commission, or City Council as applicable to the decision. All actions taken by the zoning administrator may be appealed within 10 calendar days. If the final day of the appeal period falls on a non-business day, the appeal period will be extended to the next business day. There are no consent items, so we're moving on to the first scheduled item, which is uh, item 6.1, public meeting for Taqueria El Gruyense, conditional use permit 175 Sebastopol Road, CUP 23-070, and Planner Briscoe will be presenting. Thank you. Good morning, staff and the community who's in attendance today. And I'm Jen Briscoe, and I'm here to present to you Takara L. Gulenese, excuse my Spanish pronunciation. Um, and this project is located at 175 Sebastopol Road. The applicant is proposing a 20 foot long food truck on, on the side of 100, 175 Sebastopol Road, and it'll be in operation from 10, 10 a.m. in the morning to 10 p.m. at night. And this requires an unconditional use permit. So that's why we're here today. As you can see here, this is a general plan line use designation and it's station mixed use, but also this is within the downtown station area specific plan. It's right, right along that border. And the zoning is zoning line use designation is also station mixed use. And here's the neighborhood context of where the site will be located. And as you can see, it's along Sebastopol Road, about a half a mile away from Matote, if you're, if you're, if you're familiar with that site. Mm -hmm. And I did an, I did a site analysis and there's about and there's about 300 feet less than 300 feet from the nearest residential use so I don't anticipate any noise complaints and also no that's excuse me and here's the site plan and the site location map and the yellow box shows where the food truck will be located on this parcel and on a site plan you can see that the food truck will be oriented oriented horizontally that was being outside of the vision triangle for the um, first site plan that the applicant submitted. It was the full truck was located within the vision triangle. So we just, we had a back and forth and then he resubmitted. Now we got this updated site plan and it's all good to go. Mm -hmm. And the project has been found in compliance with the California Environment, Environmental Quality Act pursuant to CEQA guidelines section 15304. The project is categorically exempt from CEQA because the project involves a temporary use having neg negligible or no permanent effects on the environment and does not propose any grading nor removal of vegetation. And at this time, there are no resolved issues um, as a result of staff review and no public comments have been received to date about this food truck. Mm. And staff analysis has considered that all findings can be met. Thus, it is recommended by the planning, planning and economic development department that the zoning administrator approve a condition use permit to allow mobile food finding or food truck at 175 Sebastopol Road. Mm. My contact information is at the bottom corner, the left corner of the screen if you have any questions. Thank you, Planner Briscoe. Is, is the applicant here or in attendance? I was just seeing if they wanted to add anything to their presentation. Um, so I'm gonna open it up for public comment. If you're attending in person, Sorry, and wish to make a comment, please raise your hand uh, for this item. 
Seeing none. Um, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. You have something um, to add? I, I also did a site visit uh, for the site, and I didn't I didn't recognize or or see any parking problems along the site. And I also did a site analysis because on our GIS system we we have an, like pictures on the site, and I did a year long analysis, and I again didn't see any issues with park, parking on the site. Okay. And um, do you know if there will be any amplified sound? Um, I don't think so. Okay. That wasn't included in the plan. Okay, got it. Okay. Um, so I, uh, reviewed your, um, proposed resolution and findings and, um, agree with them and I'll be approving the, um, CP 23-070 Takria El Griense at 175 Sebastopol Road. Thank you. Maybe we close the oh, sorry. And I'm closing the public comment period. Yeah. The appeal period. Yes. So appeal period would be. May 13th. May 13th. 13th, May 13th, which is the next calendar day after the 10 day appeal period. So if, if anybody would like to appeal this decision, they need to submit it by May 13th, end of business day. Thank you, Mr. Briscoe. Moving on to the next item. It's right here. <laughs> Sorry. So item 6.2. Uh, is a conditional use permit to extend the fence at 3963 Sacramento Avenue. It's uh, file number CUP 24-001 and Planner Bislow will be presenting. Perfect. Good morning. Uh, my name is Sichnor Bisla, and the project before you today is a fence extension for the property located at 3963 Sacramento Avenue. This is a request for a minor conditional use permit to extend the fence into the side yard setback along Yulupa Avenue to allow the use of the side yard while still maintaining safety and privacy. The fence consists of six feet of solid and 18 inches of lattice and the fence will be screened off using landscaping to maintain the aesthetic quality. Here's a quick neighborhood context map that shows you where it's located um, on the corner of Sacramento Avenue and Ulupa Avenue. The general plan land use designation for this site is low density residential and the zoning is R16, which is for single family residential. There is a aerial view of the site and a site plan that shows um, where the new fence is located. The fence is somewhat constructed, but it has not yet been completed. I believe the applicant is waiting for um, final approvals in order to fully complete the fence. Here are some pictures of what's there so far. Um, so where you see the stakes kind of sticking up above the solid fencing, uh, that area is what will be filled in with the lattice. Um, and then the fence will continue where you see that uh, gated area that hasn't been completed. The applicant has submitted this landscaping plan, um, which will help guess break up the visual um, the visual aspect of the fence as when you're driving or walking past, it is a bit visually dominating. So uh, staff made a suggestion to incorporate some planting um, just to make it a bit easier on the eyes. Here's an example of what that proposed landscaping would look like. The project is categorically exempt from the California Environmental Quality Act as it is the construction of an accessory structure. There are no unresolved issues as a result of staff review and staff analysis has concluded that all of the findings can be met. Um, at the time of creating this presentation, we did not have any public comment in, but since then uh, I did receive an email from a neighbor. There was a concern about um, the visual aspect, um, I guess vision being blocked going onto Sacramento Avenue from Yulupa Avenue. 
our zoning code does have a vision triangle requirement that requires that um, a 40 foot by 40 foot vision triangle uh, at any intersection not have um, structures over three feet that would block the uh, visual that would block the view when driving mm -hmm. um, and staff analysis has concluded that the fence is entirely out of the vision triangle and does not um, block uh, driver vision. There was also a concern that the aided, or the fenced off side yard would be used for RV parking. Mm -hmm. uh, the applicant has confirmed that that is not the case and the, the project has also been conditioned to prevent that in the future. Um, if they did want to use that area for any type of vehicle parking, they would need to provide a continuously paved um, path of access and parking area that uh, comes from the existing driveway. So they would not be able to, um, they would have to use the existing curb cut driveway, all of that. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it is recommended by the Planning and Economic Development Department that the Zoning Administrator approve a minor conditional use permit to allow the construction of a seven and a half foot fence in the exterior side yard setback at 3963 Sacramento Avenue. Uh, for any questions or comments, this is my contact information, and I believe the applicant is uh, present as well to answer okay. any questions. Thank you, Planner Beasley. On that slide showing the vision triangle, mm -hmm. can you highlight it with your cursor? Yes, this is a, um, this one was, it's right here, sorry. Okay. This image was provided by the applicant and it is just an estimate, but I did do my own analysis and mm -hmm. I can confirm that um, the fence is not located within. So it's measured 40 triangle. feet from that. Can you show where it's measured from? Yeah, so. Just for the audience. Um, it would be 40 feet mm -hmm. by 40 feet um, and using from the intersection. parallel line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Along the, the curb. Okay. And um, did you, when you were um, reviewing the project, did you notice similar fences in the neighborhood? Um, along Ulupa Avenue, yes, because that is a very busy road. Yeah. Um, so the homes located along that street did tend to have um, more, I guess, dominant fencing um, to, for the privacy and safety, mm -hmm. um, but not like within the neighborhood. Okay. Thank you, Planner Beesla. Um, is the applicant present? Hi. Um, would you like to add anything to Planner Beesla's presentation? Yeah, I think she covered most of it is for uh, mainly for safety. You know, uh, Ulip is pretty busy. Um, we've had transient people actually sleep in the yard right by the tree. Mm -hmm. um, we've also had multiple shopping carts with garbage put in our yard. And um, also across the street, there's a um, hall that gets rented out and they have parties until about 10 o'clock at night. And then people come in our yard and are still drinking. Um, so we've had multiple safety concerns and with our daughter's bedroom being on that side, we just want privacy and safety. Okay. Okay. I'm going to open up for public comment. If you're attending in person and wish to make a comment, please raise your hand. Hi. Hi. Can you please state your name for the record? And, My name is Tracy Candiotti. And just a moment, I'm going to go ahead and start a timer. Okay. Um, and what did you say your name was? Tracy Candiotti. Candiotti? Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I've lived in the neighborhood for um, 31 years, and um, there there are no, I mean, I've looked along Yalupa, there are no such fences right up against the, the, the sidewalk. There is no room for any plants unless they were, you know, that you had a diameter of a couple inches, because it's right up against the sidewalk. Um, it does impede vision, um, both going turning on to Sacramento and leaving Sacramento. You have to really jet out to see fully the, the, the view. Cars go fast on that street, um, especially coming um, <clears throat> they come fast and also um, and especially in the morning commute and school hours, and uh, afternoon to evening 
school let out and um, and commute times. Um, uh, what was not mentioned is that this property borders an elementary school mm -hmm. and they are currently building, a, uh, it's expanding to have uh, predominantly kindergarten and transitional kindergarten children. Uh, um, there are so many aspects to this, but um, one is the visibility, which is already poor. Um, and this is worse, it's much worse. It's much less safe as a resident who, who needs to go in and out of that intersection. I mean, I could go somewhere else, but I'd have to go all the way to Takaba and then back up to, uh, to Bennett Valley Road and then come back to get out of that neighborhood. It's very difficult. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the really the, the main pathway which is now going to be impeded if this path if this passes. Also, I'm an occupational therapist, and um, this will um, decrease the safety for the children that may be leaving and walking or riding their bikes, um, especially the small smaller children. Their um, their behaviors are and movements are uh, unpredictable, less predictable, and they will. Um, they will dart after something they dropped and and this um, less ability to see is um, going to make it a, a recipe for disaster. Uh, and aesthetically, there are there are no fences that are tall right up to the sidewalk. They're set back quite a bit on Yulipa. Um There's so many other things, but I'm out of time. Um, but I'm vehemently opposed to this. Okay. It's, it's just not safe. It's not, it's not helpful for the community in any way. Okay. And I really, it's just one more tick not that I should believe. It's, it's, it's difficult to get out of my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I see. Thank you for your comment. Is there anyone else that would like to comment on this project? And I will close the public comment. Um, do you have anything you'd like to add? With the viewing um, during the school and everything, when schools are parked there, you can't see whether there was a fence there or not because the cars are out along the sidewalk and you can't see over the cars or through the cars. Um, also with the construction now, the construction company is parking all the way in the red zone. There's a red zone all the way down. Uh, the pictures that were on there shows a car parked in the red zone, and that's impeding the vision for the road. Um, not really the fence. <laughs> Is there on street parking allowed on? Um, I am not. It's back. Where's the, the red curve? Yeah, if you go back to the pictures. Let me share my screen. Yeah, I can see it if it's bright enough. So um, let's see. And also, if you go down, so that that van is parked in a red zone. Um, the okay. red zone goes all the way to the end of the fence, basically where the tree is. Mm -hmm. um, also, if you go down to Tachiva and uh, Neotomos Drive, their fences almost go all the way out to the curb mm -hmm. and have bushes that almost circle it, so you can barely see coming out of those. But yeah, the, the red zone is all the way down to where the back of the tree is there. Yeah, those, those fences are set back quite a bit. Upper. This one has about two inches from the... Has I can't tell where the red curb is. Get up and show. Okay, yes, please. <laughs> from the side so line. So it goes all the way over oh, here. That's all red? Yes, that's all red. It's hard to tell, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, so I will now pl close public comment. Um, and then I just want to disclose that I visited the site yesterday around six, six o'clock, uh, just to see um, if, it, if my, my vision was impaired, trying to make a left um, onto Yalupa. Um, it didn't. It did seem like it was set back far enough out of the clear vision triangle. 
Um, you do still have to inch out to make sure <laughs> nobody's coming. So you have to or bicycles into the bike lane to slightly. Safety. Yes, and it's just it's just it's. Ma'am, the public comment period has. Oh, sorry, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is I just like well, should I put my house up for sale now or mm -hmm. should I wait? I see. So I just wanted to disclose that I did visit the site and and uh, turned right in and left out. Um, uh, looked around in the immediate vicinity to see if there are similar fences in the neighborhood. I think there's a shorter fence across the street on Sacramento. Um, but given that the it is such a busy road and you want to buffer noise and um, and have more privacy on your property. I also noted that the school is, has built a fence almost in line with yours, um, so, but it was uh, chain link, so it's see-through, but it still falls in line with your fence. Um, I think the addition of the landscaping will help soften um, yeah, the look there, of the fence. There is 16 inches between the fence and the sidewalk. Okay. Um, and the project has been conditioned that they need to provide landscaping. They're not exactly bound to the plans that they provided. If that happens to not work out for them because of space mm -hmm. issues, they can go with other plans, other design, um, but they just do have to provide landscaping. Yeah, I agree. It also helps with um, graffiti abatement. So I would recommend doing something unless you want to clean graffiti all the time. So um Given that it meets the clear vision triangle um, requirement, I, I don't see that it's a visual impairment to have the fence there. Um, I think it can be attractive with landscaping. Um, and with that, um, I'll be approving the conditional use permit to extend the fence at 3963 Sacramento Avenue. Um, please note that this action is final unless an appeal is filed with the city clerk's office within 10 calendar days of today's decision pursuant to zoning section 20-62030. And for this item, that date is May 13th, 2024. So thank you. So my <laughs> Moving on to item 6.3, public meeting, uh, conditional use permit for Alderbrook at hospital at 100 Brookwood Avenue, file number CP23-073. Again, we have Planner B slip presenting. Thank you. Yes, the project before you is for the Alderbrook Pet Hospital at 100 Brookwood Avenue. It's a request for a minor conditional use permit to operate a veterinary hospital that will consist of consultation rooms, a surgical suite, an imaging suite, a lab area, a large treatment area, doctor's offices, a break room, a pet pharmacy, and a reception slash waiting area. The proposed hours are 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. seven days a week. However, the applicant did say that um, given how busy they are, they may later opt to extend hours into the evening. Um, and there will be 12 to 15 employees on duty at any given time. Here is a neighborhood context map so you can see where the site is located. Uh, it is along Brookwood Avenue between Sonoma Avenue and 2nd Street. And here's an aerial view of the site. The general plan land use designation is uh, both office and medium density residential, and the zoning is commercial office. Here's a site plan so you can see where the uh, suite is located uh, relative to the rest of the commercial plaza. And here's a floor plan. Uh, you can see some exam rooms over here, a waiting reception area down here, um, and lab surgery rooms back here. This project is categorically exempt from the California Environmental Quality Act in that it is a operation within an existing facility involving a neg negligible expansion of the former use. There are no unresolved issues as a result of staff review and no public comment has been received for this project. Uh, staff is able to make all the required findings for this project. Um, the suite itself has been used for various medical uh, uses in the past and there are also other medical offices located uh, 
nearby, both in the plaza and um, on adjacent streets. Therefore, it is recommended by the Planning and Economic Development Department that the Zoning Administrator approve a minor conditional use permit to allow medical service vet veterinary clinic animal hospital land use at 100 Brookwood Avenue. And for any questions or comments, this is my contact information. Um, I do believe we have uh, representatives from the applicant team present. Hi, would you like to make, add anything to Planner Beastless presentation? Um, no, we're, um, practice has been in the community for decades. We're looking to expand. My partner, Dr. Hart, who's practicing right now, lives in the neighborhood. So just excited to- Are you relocating or adding another? It's relocated. Oh, okay. So this Got is, the, we're in a little Victorian house. Yeah, I saw, so. yeah, I noticed it, yeah. Okay. It's a lot easier for access being on a single floor and for the, the staff and team. So okay. we're excited. All right. I'm going to open it up for public comment. If you're attending in person and wish to make a comment, please raise your hand. Yes. Um, Brad Furrow, I'm the property owner of oh. Side Shopping Center. Um, what, what was your name, sir? Brad. Red. And it's F R U I H T. And that building was constructed and used by Dr. Earl Rathman, an eye doctor, for okay. 20 something years, and he retired. And we're excited to have all the work as a new tenant. Okay. Great. Thank you. And seeing there's uh, no one else that would like to make a comment, I'm going to close the public comment, but I will ask, did you review parking for the shopping center? Um, yes, there is existing parking on site and also the zoning code does state that when um, there are similar uses coming in mm -hmm. that uh, we do not need to require any additional parking that was already existing for the previous use. Okay. And does your reso restrict hours of operation? No. Okay. Got it. Okay. So yeah, um, I reviewed the uh, resolution. Um, I think it's a compatible use to what was there before. It'll be a nice addition to the shopping center. So with that, I'm going to approve the use permit for uh, initial use permit for Alderbrook Pet Hospital at 100 Brookwood Avenue, file number CUP 23-073. Please note that this action is final unless an appeal is filed with the city clerk's office within 10 calendar days of today's decision uh, for this item. That date is May 13, 2024. Uh, with that, the uh, zoning administrator meeting is now adjourned. Thank you.